Incident in the Life of a Slave Girl is a book by Harriet Jacobs. Um, it tells the story of Jacob's time growing up in Antebellum self, as well as her escape to freedom. It also gives a first-person like insight into the life of a slave during that time. Okay, so Jacob's her life started out different uh, than some slave. She was born the daughter of a free man and an enslaved woman. Um, her father was a uh, mix, so Jacobs herself was a light skin. Um, she didn't really get sold into what we as Amer like looking back on history think of as slavery, the chattel slavery or the plantation slavery um, until she was a little bit older after both her parents had died. She was sold into the doctor's home, Dr. Flint. After uh, Dr. Flint bought her, Jacobs became more aware of what it was like to be a slave in America and that lifestyle. Um, along with her brother, her aunt and her grandmother and uncles were also enslaved. Um, as she got older, um, Dr. Flint started making sexual advances towards her. Um, at this point in the book, Jacobs goes in to describe what it was like to be a female slave um, once you hit the age of about 12 or 13, it was likely that your owner and any other higher up white males will rape you. Jacob's story was a little different because her, her master had a, he had an obsession with her. He, the way she describes it is almost like he wanted her to consent to the rape and the sexual harassment he was planning to do to her. He, he had something for her. Um, this made Jacob's wife jealous, um, the wife, um, was creepy and would often, s like, stand over Jacob's as, sh as she was sleeping to see if she would admit to an affair with her husband. Um, around that point, Jacob started to realize she wanted to become free, so she created a plan, um, which involved sleeping with a uh, white, another white slave owner for, to have his child, um, which would make her a less desirable slave to her, the doctor, and hopefully the doctor would sell her. Um, at this point, there was an interesting passage where Jacob's, her, Jacob's very first owner um, that she had when she was younger installed Christian values into her, which would include not, um, you know, sleeping with someone just because, or sex outside of a marriage, or, you know, not just having sex for sex, unless you were married, uh, was a type of value, which, you know, she would be breaking, and then, so that was one interesting caveat she had to this plan. Another one was her grandmother. Um, her grandmother was, was a very prideful woman, and believed that her family should be free because they work for it or because they bought their freedom not because they did something else um so her grandmother wasn't in on this plan um and after linda did tell her she was pregnant her grandmother briefly um wasn't a fan of hers um after linda got pregnant or harriet actually after harriet got pregnant um she expected her owner to sell her he did not um, he decided that it was best for him that he, that she stayed with him. Um, he was very possessive over her. Um, after having another child with the baby daddy or politician, um, she still wasn't sold. Um, and as her kids grew older, she realized she didn't want them to live the same type of life that she lived or that she had witnessed. Throughout the book, there's inserts about the different types of lives a slave could live. Um, Jacobs is b sure to mention these things because her own experience wasn't the typical experience because she was light-skinned and because of how her owner was. She wanted to make sure to illustrate what it was like as a whole to be a slave, not just her own experience. So she talked about the experience of her brother who worked um, as like, uh, he worked closely with um, her baby daddy, and eventually her, the, 
the baby daddy who was a politician would have set him free, but her brother decided to leave, uh, do some sailing. So he, he ran away, even, but he eventually bought his freedom. But she illustrated her brother's story, her uncle's story. Her uncle was enslaved his entire life, but he worked until, I believe, he brought his freedom. But he was a pillar in the community. Her grandmother did not buy her freedom, but was set free by her master's sister because her her master, a woman, was going to set her free. But when she died, her family refused to, but the aunt, or not her aunt, her master's sister decided to buy her and set her free. So she illustrates the different stories to show what it was like to be a slave, not just her own personal story. Um, anyways, back to her, Jacob's actual story. Jacob's decides, as her children gets older, specifically her daughter, she didn't want her daughter to endure the same sexual harassment that she did. She decided to hatch a plan to escape, which went against her grandmother's belief because her grandmother was very adamant that they should buy their freedom, that she shouldn't run because her younger uncle ran and he got caught, got thrown in jail. It wasn't, it didn't, it didn't work. It wasn't good for him. And her grandmother didn't want to have to go through that again. But she did run and she ended up staying inside a small, like, area underground ish for seven years um during those seven years um the doctor didn't never he never really stopped looking for her he assumed like everybody else that she went north um eventually she got an opportunity to leave on a ship and actually go north there she was reunited with her daughter so her kids had been freed mostly by their father um they were free but like the daughter was sold slash given to a lady in New York who didn't treat her well, abused her, took away her schooling, and all the promises the dad had given um, Harrison or Harriet. Um, but once Linda got to New York, she was still uh, being followed by the doctor. So eventually she wrote to the doctor's family asking for her freedom. It, it really came down to money and I guess pride because the doctor refused to free her until she got a f her one of her friends who she worked for bought her, her freedom. So eventually she did get free, but you know, that was after the second fugitive save law went into act and she was worried that she'd be taken away from her children again. But finally her white mistress or not mistress because but her boss um but her freedom um so to me the highlights of the book were i guess the more emotional parts where you see jacobs's or linda's um like thoughts about being enslaved when she reflects on that experience not telling it from like as it was like a present day perspective but like there are certain chapters where she's reflecting I like those chapters where she talks about it because she knows, like, her experience is different. But I like the fact that she opened up the book to, like, everybody's experience or potentially, like, a general experience and sp specific experiences. Like, she talked about her aunt who never ended up having children but was one of the few slaves that she knew who married. But the reason she never had children was because her mistress made her sleep on the floor every night. Um... And she lost three or four babies that way on the floor of her mistress's bed. So she never really could like hang with her husband or anything. So I, it was passages like those that stuck out to me where it was like strong, emotional and like showed how horrible the conditions were for this, uh, like in slavery. Um, some shortcomings of the passage. Honestly, I thought it was a really, really well written book and, and really illustrated the first person perspective of being a slave, especially a woman. I guess if I had to put a shortcoming, Jacobs did live past where she ended the book. She ended it right before the Civil War. I would have liked to have seen her opinions or I guess how she did. I know she wrote this book or she might have started writing the book before the Civil War. But I would have liked to see more of like how her life worked out, you know, just to see how she dealt with it. And I would also like, I would have also liked to, I like, maybe not, I guess, epilogue or like an after part, um, like what happened to her family. 
Um, um, this book was very historic, especially since it was published right before the Civil War. Um, as a black woman, it really just gives some insight, especially to what the abolitionists were fighting against. Um, it really, I guess, it helped open people's minds about what that life, what life was like as a slave, to help them fight for it. Um, there could be alternate perspectives on the book's main idea that's probably from the enslaver's perspective, which I feel like since this book is a biography or an autobiography, it's, there's no, it's what happened to her. So there's no, I suppose there could be some like, um, conflict or contradictory perspectives, but it's not something that really should be disputed because it's a first person narrative. Um, it does address change over time. The book addresses change over time um, because it shows change over her lifetime where she mentioned some historical events like slave rebels, um, the Fugitive Slave Act were some of the main ones, but it shows over time different slaves' opinions about what they're fighting for and why they're fighting for, especially like just her herself. Or like her grandma's perspective, her grandma of an older generation. It definitely shows the impact of slavery and the opinions of the younger generation versus the older generation. Um, I feel like this book could have helped turn a tide of conflict, at least for some people who were questioning whether or not slavery was right or wrong. It might have showed them a different perspective that they weren't looking, looking at or didn't know because a lot of slaves couldn't read or write. So... If you weren't going to hear straight from them and everybody else tells you this is okay, then you're just going to assume it's okay. Or, I mean, at least that's how it went. But I feel like maybe those people who were like, hmm, maybe this isn't like a great idea to do or we shouldn't be doing these to people. I feel like this book might have opened their minds and helped them join the abolitionist movement.